Right, finally time to have a look around this Aninja, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. 48 volt hybrid inverter, and this gives out 6.2 kilowatts at the outputs. Uh, so this is uh, similar or a, almost a direct comparison to the EA Sun uh, hybrid inverter I've been running for some time, the one that I blew up and also I bought another one which is currently running at the moment. Um, as you can see on here I don't need to mess about with making uh, filters as I do on the EA Sun out of um, sort of uh, vacuum cleaner filters as such. These come with ones built in so you can just take the covers off and clean them so pretty much similar to my MPP 24 volt solar inverter as well. Um, it's standard fare in terms of what it offers so uh, but this one has something extra on one of the first ones I've got that's supposed to support uh, battery less operation. So if you've got a solar array that's big enough um, and you have uninterrupted sun then uh, this is supposed to be able to run without actually attaching a battery but I'll test it out and I'll go through that later on in this video. So what I'm going to do now is just have a quick look around here as part of the quick tour. So as you can see on here we've got the AC input here so that's where I'd connect it up to grid. The AC output with obviously the earthing terminal there which is uh, live and neutral and the PV inputs go in here on this particular model. And here we've got the uh, battery inputs here and these give up to or you can use up to a maximum of 35 millimeter square uh, cable in that which is what I've got to uh, go into and the airflow in this one obviously it will come through it'll be sucked in through these here and then it'll be expelled here so uh, that's the route of the air cooling for this um, the display here as well as you can see I'm trying to cut out down some of the reflection on here uh, it's a standard setup again as you'd expect and then you've got obviously the other branding and that on that so all the uh, good stuff happens here so I'm just going to whip this case cover off here and show it what looks like under the uh, covers. Covers off now as you can see so we've got some uh, plastic here again that probably helps direct airflow in there so obviously it comes out of these uh, fans here and you might be able to see there that there's the battery connection terminals. These aren't um, like the other ones where they've got stud connections, you know, where I'd uh, put on a, a lug on the end and then bolt them. These are just uh, bare cable installs. I don't know if we can get that in there, but yeah, they'll just be put bare cables in there and then that will uh, be tightened down once they're in there. Again, similar to other models in this kind of setup, this type of hybrid inverter. Um, down here we've got more sort of more space uh, what comes in here so you need to have longer cables in here so there's you know there's more of a sort of a gap in there so that they go through to the terminal blocks there and again I'm hoping that stays in focus but you can see where the AC input is you've got your um, your well your input from your grid connection or whatever that looks like for you and I, I just again connected up to a normal socket so I won't ever go over a certain amount of charging current from that when I charge it up and then you've got your AC output there again obviously I'll just put that to my little uh, distribution box that I've made up as part of my other one that I use and obviously the PV inputs there as well but the other difference on this one compared to yeah, Sun and other ones that I've uh, got is I've actually got two ports so not just a single com port so on this one RS485 there is for connecting up to the battery uh, I've not got that sorted yet, so that might be a follow-up video. And the other one there is the RS232. So that there is what I'd connect up to um, the Wi-Fi dongle that actually comes with. So this comes with the Wi-Fi dongle. And there's a little cutout groove there as well. I'm hoping that's in focus. So then that would be how you connect up. And that's actually where I'm going to be connected up to Solar Assistant. But I have had some problems connecting up to the battery or to my Apexian batteries using the sort of 485 connection now. Not been working because in theory you should be able to connect it up and then once you hook it up it should come up with an LI for lithium battery on there. So it actually knows the state of charge coming from the BMS but I still haven't got that one working on this yet. So I'm just going to use it as I've used all my other ones at the moment. Connecting up here to solar inverter, sorry solar assistant and then making sure that the BMS is still connected to Solar Assistant independently. So I've still got the overall running capability on here and then set up all the voltages that I would normally run on this so it works out like that. So that's the uh, quick tour done. So here are the cables in question. So I've got these lugs here and they're gonna go into my battery disconnect. 
so that that will be hooked up to the batteries, but then I can remove that. And here's the other ends. As you can see, they're just um, exposed cable that would go straight into these uh, ports here and be tightened down. Obviously, they're both the same color because I didn't have any of the red left, so I'll just put uh, a little bit of uh, electric tape around there, red color, just to identify as I normally do when I've got the same uh, colored um, cables on that. So that'd be quite easy to set up when I connect it up to the main system. Uh, the solar panels and also the 30 kilowatt hours of Apexium batteries. Right, so I've swapped out the inverters now. So the EA Sun one has been taken out and I've uh, put this and NJ one in now. Um, so I'll get, quickly show you what I've done. So the first point on there, which is the AC input, is what I'm using for the plug. So I'm just using that obviously limited uh, to 40 uh, amps on that at 48 volts. So I don't go over what the normal uh, 13 amp plug socket can provide. This is the uh, connector here in the uh, RS232 port, which goes to the uh, solar assistant uh, orange Pi there. So uh, that's what I'm doing. So I'll need to change that and make sure that works within uh, solar assistant. So further down there, I've got the uh, AC output there. So I've got the juicy piece here, which runs into the uh, little distribution box I've got there. So that splits the 6.2 kilowatts output. I've got the uh, PV inputs there again marked up because they're the same color. I've got the positive in there and then the negative. Obviously I won't be able to test that out until the morning and see what we get. I'm hoping for another sunny day. And again, as already covered, I'm gonna try and get it so that I can get these two 48 uh, volt batteries, these uh, 30 kilowatt hour Pexium batteries to talk to this unit. But at the moment I can't get that to work properly. So here's the battery disconnect here. Here are the uh, fuses. So these are a couple of 660 amp fuses here. And then they just bolt into there so that I can just disconnect the battery. And obviously they've, they're fused as well. So if ever there's any problems, uh, they get to over 160 amps there, they'll just uh, pop, which means it disconnects the uh, inverter from the batteries. So I'm gonna talk these down here. I'm gonna put this back in here connect it up and then just see if I can switch it on. All connected up now, uh, finished. I'm gonna put the lid back on in a minute. Obviously once I've tested it works okay and switches on. Uh, I did this at night, uh, this particular bit because obviously I was having a good solar day today as on screen at the moment. So I didn't really want to interrupt that with the work of changing over the uh, inverter during uh, a decent solar day. So one of the best uh, this year, if not this year so far. So uh, let's uh, switch it on now. And let's see what it does. It's making the right noises. And things are switching on and things have switched on. So it looks to me as if we're in business. Nothing's tripped. And no problems on any of that. The orange pie for solar assistant has now come back on. So it's now communicating back uh, with the uh, internet. So what I'll do in a minute is I'll uh, log on to that and just set it up so that it talks to this one. From where I did a brief uh, check from this before, I had to just change the type of inverter because before it was down as a Voltronic inverter for MPP, EA Sun and all that kind of thing. So I'm gonna change it over to a different one because that was what one of the problems was with communication on this. Obviously, once you know which one it is, uh, it's easy to set up. So as all for the uh, inverter swap over, it looks like it's ready. So I'll feed back once it starts giving uh, solar into the system in the morning. So hopefully another decent day coming up. So, so far so good. Uh, it's running really well today. Uh, I'll just show you what it looks like on um, solar assistant. So as you can see, it's an excellent day so far. I'm getting sort of 1,270 odd watts out of the 1360 array. So this is working perfectly. It's almost the perfect day for it. Uh, in terms of the fans, the fans are on all the time, unlike the EA Sun one, where they just come in uh, when needed. But what I have noticed is, is the fact that the inverter runs uh, a lot cooler generally, obviously, because they're always on and they're on like a low pitched hum noise. So they're really easy to get used to and obviously go up uh, when the uh, when the load goes up and it needs to cool down a bit more. 
So the, the other thing that I've found as well is that um, to connect the inverter up, I had to use, as you can see on screen at the moment, uh, oh there, so you can see on screen at the moment, I had to use a model called Summary and not the Voltronic uh, setup for this particular one um, when using it for in Solar Assistant. So that appears to have worked and it's picked everything that I need up from that. So I get all the uh, usual graphs and so forth. So yeah, the graphs are coming out and I seem to be getting more yield compared to this time yesterday, which is good. Again, you can't compare two days exactly the same, but uh, in general terms, um, it does look like it has, or has the sticky voltage around the 100 volts mark. So my original um, efforts to change this and make that work have uh, seem to have brought it back up to the voltage it needs obviously because it's actually probably bringing in slightly more in terms of that now and it's even bringing in slightly more current as you can probably just make out there it's tipped over the 10 amps mark so um, yeah so far so good um, so that should uh, cover this one off although it's not easy to convey how loud this is unless you're in the room uh, when you're running it under high load I thought I'd just put something on to give you an idea and again you're only listening through the speakers or headphones or however you're watching this video at the moment so i'm just going to put on uh, a uh, induction hob up to two kilowatts and also the three kilowatt fast boil kettle that i've got so just to give you an idea and i'll just put up on screen the amount of load it's using and again this is good uh, good for up to 6.2 kilowatts uh, total output so let's put those on now I'm going to put the mic next to it and obviously some of that's the kettle that you can hear so I'd say it's equivalent to the noise that I've got on for the EA Sun but that's just to give you a little idea of what it sounds like right time to check whether this thing runs battery less so as you can see no battery in there and we've got the ac output running to this old uh, extension cord here again just a temporary setup and then the pv input there is coming from my four panels here which total 1360 watts so uh, let's just plug this in down here now I'll try and do this one-handed let's get that in there and all right, that's plugged in now. Let's see if anything happens on the screen. There's no pop or bang, so oh, there we are. Fans kicked in. And we've got the solar panel. I'm hoping you can see that on there. Solar panel's come up. So nothing's going on on there so let's just go down the menu see what we've got so we've got the pv input there 156 volts obviously it's not drawing anything because i've not switched uh, anything on yet so let's get the uh, inverter powered up all right let's see what happens now and there we have it you can see that's come in there is no uh, obviously battery because there's no battery attached at the moment so it looks like, if we go down the menu, it looks, we've got 230 volts coming in. Let's keep going down, 157 volts. So obviously it's just got the amount that's running the inverter with at the moment. So let's see if we can make a cuppa. And nope, nothing happening there at the moment. I think that initial is probably too much. So let's try it again and switch it off and on. And this draws about 1200 watts. So this is gonna be a bit of a test and a challenge for it to be fair. So 
so it hasn't worked with that so what I'm going to do is just try to find something uh, that's a little bit less powerful to see if we can run obviously because it's only the first of May and we're not probably getting much over 1200 watts out of this lot at the moment so back to the drawing board I might switch it off and on again and see if we can have another go right I had another go and I've reset it again so I'm going to push the button now and see whether I think it's working I think it's working I can hear the fan going and what I'm going to do is make sure I don't shadow shadow the panels I think that's what happened before no nah, it's not worked again so let's switch it off it's probably just on the edge of what it can provide determined to have a copper so uh, I've let it reset itself now and as you can see it's coming in at the moment reasonably clear in the sky so I'm just going to use this 830 watt kettle so let's see uh, it's pulling in oh look at that 800 almost 890 watts from the uh, PV input at the moment so it is boiling obviously it'll be a bit of a slow process but yeah I think probably a little bit too much for this four panel array to do the uh, 1200 watt uh, Nespresso machine but that looks to me like it's actually working it's bringing the input in no battery obviously and it's uh, providing 230 volts output and it's now boiling the kettle so it does work so for this if you've got a larger uh, solar array and you did just want to use this even if you didn't have a battery or because I get a lot of questions about whether these work with it with or without batteries and obviously this one as you can see does which was the reason for testing this if you've got a larger array and you're in a sunnier <laughs> European city perhaps than uh, where I am in the UK then it is possible to run larger loads with this I don't know what the peak uh, load would be like and I think that was probably what was flipping this off uh, before where it was just trying to draw too much too much initial peak because obviously it only has a certain amount coming in from the panels anyway from the array so uh, I'm going to fast forward to the end of this to save you watching it so while that continues to boil I'll just show you how much uh, it's actually giving at the output so you see it's bringing in about 880 watts at the moment from PV so if we cycle through the menus on here it's got 12% load and you see it's giving out just under 800 watts so it's losing about 80 watts or so of what's coming in so reasonably efficient um, from what the panels are producing at the moment here we go it's getting ready to boil and there we go and the uh, watts have dropped down there obviously what it's drawing in and we've got a boiled kettle so uh, keep that away obviously this is only temporary this setup but put that in there like that and we have one cup of tea so if you do have any comments questions or suggestions just pop them in the section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Dad Vinci.